In this video, I will demonstrate how to find the resultant vector of any two vectors. I'll start off by drawing out a xy plane. And the two vectors that we will be using in this example will be one that has a magnitude of 56 and it has an angle of 123 and another that has a magnitude of 39 and these are just randomly picked and an angle of let's say 32. So if we were to draw these on our xy plane they would look something like this. Now they're not to scale but I'm going to try my best. 123 degrees would be around here and this would be 56 as our magnitude and 123 degrees and the other angle would be somewhere here where you have 32 degrees and a magnitude of 39. Now what we need to do is we need to find out the resultant vector. In other words, if I were to take this arrow and place it right here, the end result would be somewhere here. So we know, we can predict that our resultant vector will be somewhere over here. That's just a prediction of mine. If we were to use the head to tail method of placing one vector from its tail to the head of the other one. So how do we do this? Well, it's fairly simple. What you need to do is you need to find the x and y components for each one. So we're going to call this v1, we're going to call this v2 for vector 1, vector 2. And I'm going to find the uh, x components of both vectors and we'll add them up. So let's find the x components of v1. The x components of v1, well, that's going to be this part right here. And that's the adjacent of the reference angle. So we're going to use the hypotenuse and the adjacent, which is cosine. And it's going to be consistent for all x components. Cosine 32 is equal to the opposite, rather the adjacent, over the hypotenuse, which is 39. And similarly for the y component of v1, we'll do the same thing. And it's going to be sine because this time we want to find the opposite of this reference. The opposite is right here. So it's opposite and hypotenuse. That is sine configuration. 32 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is what we're looking for over our hypotenuse, which is 39. And if we rearrange these two equations very fairly simply, you would have to multiply 39 by cosine 32 and that would give you the adjacent. So let's do that on our calculator. Cosine 32 times 39. And that gives us an adjacent of 33. 33, and let's be a little more accurate, 33.07. And similarly, we'll do the following. Sine of 32 times 39 gives us an answer of 20.66, 20.66. So we found our components for V1. V2 is a little bit more tricky, and the reason why it's a little bit more tricky is because the angle extends beyond 90, and our calculator is programmed only to give us ratios uh, for positive angles. So, how do we do this? We will have to find a reference angle and then eventually find the answer to this and the answer to this. How do we find the reference angle? Fairly simply, if your vector is in the second quadrant, this is the second quadrant, you will take your angle and subtract it from 180. And that gives us an answer of 57 exactly. So our reference angle, this one right here, is going to be 57. And we're going to use that to find the components. So for V2, we're going to use, well, we want to find the X component, this one, which is the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse spells out cosine. So cosine of this angle that we just found 
we're looking for the adjacent, the hypotenuse is 56, the answer here is 56 times cosine of 57, the answer is 30.49. You need to also keep in mind something very important here. There's this rule called the cast rule, which means that if you evaluate anything here that's cosine, it's positive. If you evaluate all trigonometric functions here, they're positive. And if you evaluate all sine functions here, they're positive. Only tan functions here are positive. In the case that we just did, well, in the top two, we all trigonometric functions that you use are going to be positive there. In this case, only sine is going to be positive. So anything you evaluate that's cosine is going to be negative. So this number has to be negative. Now let's move on to do sine now. In this case, we'll have sine of 57 degrees is equal to the opposite, which we are, which we are seeking, over the hypotenuse of 56. We're going to use our calculator here sine 57 times, we cross multiply, 56 is equal to 46.96. 46.96. So now that we have all our vector components for both v1 and v2, we can go ahead and, sub and add them all up. So let's do that. Let's add these up, and let's add these up. And let's find out what we get. 33.07, I'm going to start off with the x components, plus negative, negative 30.49 is equal to 2.58. And similarly, 46.96 plus 20.66 is equal to 67.62, 67.62. Now we predicted that our resultant vector at the very beginning would be some point here. And it sort of makes sense. If we were to find out the length of the x part of this line, it would be approximately 2.58. And similarly, it looks like 67.62. And remember, that was a rough sketch, so uh, that's what it would look like. Okay, so we found the, uh, the x and y components of this resultant vector, but really that doesn't give us any important information. Uh, a vector is defined by its magnitude and it's defined by its angle. These two pieces of information help us find that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out, I'm going to create some more space here, what I'm going to do is draw out that triangle on an x and y plane, and it would look something like this, where we have 2.58 going this way and 6.67 going up here. And I'm going to define it and then use Pythagorean theorem to find out what my hypotenuse is. And similarly, I can use any trigonometric function that I want to find out the angle that this represents. Let's start with that because that seems easier. If this is our reference angle and this is what we have, the opposite of the reference and the adjacent, O and A is tangent. Tangent theta, opposite over adjacent. Let's go ahead and find our angle. There you have it. And we're going to use our calculator, divide that by 2.58. And we are going to use the inverse tan function, which is right here of the answer. And we get 87.81 degrees. And I mean, if you look back, that looks like 87 degrees. Just visually, it looks like 87 degrees. 
Now what we need to do is we need to find out the magnitude. Essentially, we need to find what this is equal to. And we can do that by using Pythagorean theorem. And this is what Pythagorean theorem is. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where C is the longest side, and it's what's highlighted. That's what we're looking for. We have our A and our B, which are referred to as the legs of the triangle, which are the shorter sides. 2.58 squared plus 67.62 squared is equal to C squared. The square root of the sum of these is equal to C. So I'll show you what I mean. Square root of 2.58 to the power of 2 plus 67.62 to the power of 2. That is equal to 67.66. The magnitude of our resultant vector is 67.66, and the angle of our resultant vector is 87.81. You can represent it however your teacher wants you to represent it. I like to represent it like such, where I have my magnitude, and then I use this sort of symbol, this angle-looking symbol, and write down 87.81. So there you have it. That is how you find the resultant of any two vectors. If you have any two vectors that you want me to solve for you, ask it at biology slash forums or biology dash forums dot com. Ask your questions there. Uh, it is absolutely free. If you have any questions in science, nursing, humanities or anything, uh, you can also use our website for that purpose. See you soon.